All right. Well, thank you all for coming today. I know it's getting towards the end of the very last day of the summit, so I appreciate you coming and spending time here. Uh, I am Kendall Nelson. I'm a senior upstream developer advocate at the Open Infra Foundation. So I wear a lot of hats and I do a lot of different things. But one of my favorite things is maintaining the relationships that we have with various universities, which yields um, a variety of students being involved in our Open Infra projects. So. Today, I'm going to go over the current university partnerships that we have, how to get in contact with me and build out um, potentially new relationships with universities. And if you are just um, a, a student, how you can try to bring that about or other opportunities that you can seize uh, to get involved in our open info projects. So getting started. First, we have Boston University, who are an associate member of the Open Infra Foundation. So what our programs look like? Um, there are two different programs that are run regularly at Boston University that we have participated in. So the one that happens most often is their Fundamentals of Cloud Computing course. This runs September through December for a single semester. And we've actually had the privilege of having both OpenStack and Kata containers participate. And what that looks like is, um, so we have community members propose a project to the professors and the professors put it in front of the students and they get a variety of proposals put in front of them and students are like, I wanna work on this one or that one or whatever. And four to five students get paired with a project um, we just had a round finish up in December. So that was, well, geez, that was almost six months ago now already. <laughs> Time flies, doesn't it? Um, so they worked on both Kata containers and OpenStack this last round. I do hope for all of these projects to get more of our, uh, or all of these courses and universities to get our other open info projects involved, but OpenStack is a very established community. When it comes to mentorship, they're very familiar with how to do that. So that is usually how we get involved first. And then Kata Containers and hopefully Starling X someday and Zool as well. So that is kind of the background of that. We've also participated in a senior design course, which was awesome because it actually ran for an entire year. So we had the same students working on OpenStack Manila and the OpenStack SDK um, for an entire year. So they were really able to dig in, get involved, learn all of what it takes to work upstream and land a lot of patches. And um, I think actually one of them ended up getting hired by Red Hat at the end. So it was really awesome to keep that talent around. And that's a goal that I have had, particularly this year, uh, making sure that we retain that talent that we're investing in as a community and all of the mentors time, obviously, as well. So um, that senior design course was just participated in by OpenStack. Um, and that was actually because the proposal that they had submitted for the fundamentals of cloud computing didn't get picked by a whole lot of students. But then they're like, oh, we have this other opportunity if you're interested in. And Manila was like, heck yeah, let's do it. So that was really awesome. And I would like to see more of that. Um, our next university, Oregon State University, is also an, also an associate member, and they are a little bit different in terms of how they're involved in the community. So that varies a lot because what Oregon State University provides is an open source lab. And in their open source lab, they hire a, a number of students throughout. Um, the durations are different. Uh, a lot of them, the students will be around until they graduate. So we work with uh, Lance Albertson, who actually is the OpenStack Chef PTL, who you might know, uh, who is also a professor at that university, and he runs the open source lab there. So he will um, assign interns to work on OpenStack upstream. And so right now we have an intern, Antonia, working on the OpenStack SDK and the OpenStack CLI with Steven Finucan and Artem Goncharov, and we tend to funnel students into those projects um, 
from this university because it gives them a little bit more um, focus on operations of OpenStack, given that they're working in the lab and managing the cloud there. And it also gives them experience working upstream in the community. So it's a, a really good like DevOps sort of situation for them. But um, yeah, we've had one or two students working on that at a time. Um, the Open Infra Foundation used to help fund the money that that intern actually got paid. But um, in more recent years, we have seen enough uh, support from Oregon State University that we haven't needed to do that, which has been great. Uh, we've still been getting that student to work upstream without having to um, donate monetarily to them. Our third university, unfortunately, all of these universities are only based in the US, but I would really love to broaden out into the rest of the world as there are universities all over the place. And I know that <laughs> the US is not the only place that has OpenStack in labs and OpenStack on the mind in various computer science programs and engineering programs. So North Dakota State University is our third uh, university in the list. They are also an associate member. And we've actually been working with them since, um, I think it was 2017 when we first got started. And every year from January to May, they offer this capstone class. And it is very, very similar to the Fundamentals of Cloud Computing course at Boston University, where they focus on a single project for the entire duration of the semester. More recently, it's evolved a little bit more into like defined roles where one student will be a project manager one week, and then they'll be in a different role the next week to get them more exposure to the different roles that they could have out in the real world. But what's really fun for us with regards to this course is that we're one of the only open source projects that get proposed. And so we're really popular. <laughs> um, the rest of the proposals usually come from companies local to North Dakota, um, which you can imagine are a lot of like, you know, uh, really uh, agriculture focused engineering sort of companies. There are some other businesses, but we're, uh, we're the fun ones because we're open source. And it's actually entertaining because the way the most recent professor has been addressing this is like, oh, but like, don't you, don't you need the students to sign an NDA? <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> no, we don't. We like, they're gonna sign a CLA but that just means that they don't own their code, but they can still talk about it and they should talk about it. They should talk about their involvement in open source. And so we try to get them to uh, be involved in uh, writing articles for our super user blog or our OpenStack blog. And this last year, we also had Kata Containers participate in this one as well. So we had them write content for the Kata blog. Those articles are not published yet, but I will uh, hopefully get to that soon after this event. <laughs> Focus was a little bit you know, on the summit, as you can imagine. So it's awesome to have them participating for as long as they have been. And we hope to continue growing this list and hopefully include Starling X someday. The last university I'm going to talk about today is Carnegie Mellon. And this is actually a really new relationship. Um, Right after KubeCon EU this year, which was in Amsterdam in mid-April-ish, um, I was contacted by a former Open Infra Foundation employee who had a contact at Microsoft who is a, uh, he's like a, a part-time professor at Carnegie Mellon. And he was like, so I have this summer program and it's going to be 20 to 30 students, and I need five to six OpenStack projects for them to work on. And you have two weeks to do it. And I was like, OK, all right. Well, I'll see what I can do. I, I'm confident that we have enough people in the community um, that are willing to mentor because OpenStack is really uh, focused on bringing new people in. We, we need help, and we're, we're willing to support them. So I was like, yeah, yeah, we can do this. We can totally do this. It was a little bit touch and go towards the end. I was at like four project proposals and I had like two days to go and then it all came in, it all worked out. It was really great. So this is a like summer program that they have running from 
the middle of May to the middle of August. And I don't know if they usually focus entirely on one open source project or if this is just a new thing, but I was more than happy to have all of these projects represented in this program. And it like, it seems to be going really well. So I am very pleased that it's all worked out. I'm getting positive feedback from the professor and I look forward to connecting students from this program to member companies as well. Um, more recently, I have been working a lot with Bloomberg and they are a member company of the Open Info Foundation. Thank you, Bloomberg. Also super user winners, as you may have seen during keynotes earlier this week. Um, we are trying to get a representative from that company and hopefully other companies as well to talk to these students working on OpenStack so that we can keep them in the community because that is um, definitely a thing that we have struggled with. We're participating in a lot of these mentoring opportunities, but keeping these people these wonderful students that add so much energy and insight and new perspective in our communities. So that's something that I'm really, really trying to do as well. So hopefully if you have suggestions on that, I am more uh, than willing to receive all of those. And so some of the numbers that I've collected. Um, this is like historic data, so throughout the last Mm, seven years of my working with various universities. This is how many students we've had go through these projects for both OpenStack and Kata. And it just occurs to me now that the OpenStack is blue at the top and red in the slide. This is why more people should review your slides before you do them live. Um, so obviously OpenStack should be red and Kata is orange. Um, and, you know, someday Starling X and Zool as well will be purple and blue. Um, but obviously I haven't mentioned Outreachy yet. And that is a completely separate program, not hosted by any particular university, which I will talk about in a little bit. But taking a moment to look at the data is really cool that we've had, you know, 15 students from North Dakota State University over... Uh, the like six-ish years, and that doesn't include the very first year we did it. I actually couldn't find how many students we had working on it. I think it was four, but that was before I owned all of these programs and managed them, so it was hard finding that data. Oregon State University, obviously the kind of special one that like a student will stick around until they graduate, so they might do it for 18 months or even two years that they're working upstream before they graduate and move on to something else. But we've had five students from there working on OpenStack, 12 from Boston University working on OpenStack, and five working on Kata, and we're at about 20 from Carnegie Mellon, from what I understand. I need to get the exact details from the professor, but they all got started only a couple weeks ago. So I'm really excited to see how that goes. And Outreachy, we've been participating in at least twice a year for the last decade, <laughs> I believe. And the number of students in Outreachy varies a lot as well based on the amount of funding that we are able to provide as a foundation and also get from the Software Freedom Conservancy who organized the Outreachy program. And there's another variable too that I am struggling to remember right now. But yeah, it, it varies a lot. But Outreachy has definitely been the biggest influx of students into our community. And we've actually managed to retain some of those as well. People like Victoria Martinez de la Cruz or Ashley Rodriguez, they work on different projects within OpenStack and we have benefited from the Outreachy project and getting them uh, or like to stick around. So how do you get involved in these programs? Well, um, if you are a student at a university, you can advocate internally for us to participate and work with each other. So if there are courses like the other universities that I talked about, you know, the course is about working on a project for the entire semester, or maybe it's just a summer program, we can work with that. And we are working with that. So we w are definitely uh, able to build a relationship with the professor of that particular course. Please put me in contact with them. 
and maybe we can get them involved in OpenStack or Kata or one of our other um, projects as well. Um, if there are specific professors I should talk to, please connect us. There is my email. It will be on another slide at the very end. I have business cards to give out to whomever wants them. Um, the other thing I would suggest is if there isn't a course like one of the ones I'd outlined, um, maybe an independent study is something that um, your, your university does. Usually you need a professor to um, work with you on that and like, um, advocate for that so that you make sure to get university credit, but it's another thing that we can work together with to get you involved in OpenStack or any of our other open info projects. So advocate. <laughs> um, our other programs that you could participate in if you can't do an independent study or you can't get it going at your university are Outreachy, one of the ones I already mentioned, hosted by the Software Freedom Conservancy. They have both summer and winter, North America, but also it would just be the opposite if, or uh, Northern Hemisphere, but it would be the opposite if you were in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's still summer and winter. <laughs> um, uh, and those are shorter term internships, um, but we have OpenStack involved in that currently, and we have future plans for getting Starling X involved. Um, the Google Summer of Code is another option. We have not historically been regular participants of that because it's very difficult to get a project accepted because they have such a huge like influx of project applications. But if it's something that you're interested in, we can definitely work with you in proposing a project to that and, and maybe it'll work out. Um, historically, we've only had OpenStack participate in that, but maybe Kata Containers would have better luck, or Starling X, or whatever you're most interested in. There are also Open Infra Days that happen globally. So there are those are local events, and there are talks there. There are usually trainings, networking. If there is something in particular you want to learn about, let the local meetup organizers know, and I'm sure they can reach out to our network and find people willing to provide that training or that knowledge that you're looking for. Um, lots and lots and lots of <laughs> variation in ways to get involved. So lastly, you know, just go do it yourself. Like you don't, you don't need anybody else. You can just go dig into the documentation. So OpenStack has a lot of documentation Kata Containers has been working on updating theirs. Starling X is also working on an update. Um, and Zool has really great developer resources as well. So you don't really need somebody else, but if you want the like more involved community experience, we do have other programs. So depending on what your comfort level is, what you're interested in doing, do it yourself. We'll be here for you. Um, questions, if uh, I think we have a mic that you can ask questions at if you have them, otherwise you can keep them to yourself and then <laughs> contact me one of these four ways. And I would really love to hear from all of you, in particular students and professors or mentors, people interested in mentoring too would be really great. But yeah, thank you so much for paying attention and uh, hanging out. So. We're like, we got like 10 minutes for questions if anybody has them. Sure. The fall semester starts in August. Okay. Yep. We're in the middle of summer right now. Yep. What's the timeline of getting something ready for the fall semester? Say, like, um, I have a seminar in advanced software, and I can easily substitute in this project. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, Sorry. I definitely think so. So okay. the the question to restate for recording and whatnot, um, what is like the necessary amount of time to get a project proposal for a university course? So you have a course running uh, that starts in the fall, so you would want it by August. So it starts. Certainly it starts yes. then. Yes. Um, I like like I said for the Carnegie Mellon thing. I got proposals together, six of them together in two weeks. Do I want to do that to myself again? No, not really. But we have all of July. <laughs> and I definitely think we could get you one or two. If you want one from OpenStack and one from Kata, we can definitely figure that out. Yeah. Great. Thank you. For sure.
Ooh, yay. More questions. Yay. I love questions. It's more um, interactive than me just talking at you. A, a bit like uh, uh, Google Summer co of Code. Yeah. These are um, uh, kind of student write-ups, uh, like at the end, for instance, of the project uh, uh, plan, typically, in this case. Mm-hmm. Um, so usually we haven't had students involved in the like application process to get accepted in Google Summer of Code. Uh, no, no, sorry, I was meaning more like the the end of the project write ups, like you know, oh, the Google okay. Summer of Code, uh, like what they learned, a bit what they did, what they learned, like a kind of a success yeah. story or. So we've done that for um, a couple of the university programs, like Boston University and North Dakota State University. We've done that for. I hope to do it for Carnegie Mellon as well, um, but. The Google Summer of Code round, the like one that we were accepted for, was before me. So I don't have that information, but I can definitely try to find it for you. Yeah, Stephen? Just to add a point on that, um, not quite the question you asked, but uh, in my experience, mentoring students, a good few of the lecturers, this has been part of the actual course itself. Oh, yeah. Is the expectation that they will keep a diary of what they're doing, they'll mm -hmm. keep like meeting notes and stuff, and they'll report, generate a report at the end, indicate, yeah. like describing what they did, kind of the problems they faced, how they overcame them, this kind of stuff. So, we, like, I've never been mandated from you guys to get the students to do this is usually come from the university itself. This has been part of the course yeah. itself. I think outreachy also requires that, that like every week or something, the student does a blog post because that's like a 40 hours a week internship basically. So they need to show that they're actively working on the project for 40 hours a week. So that's required for that one. But yeah, that, that's a good point. That's a good question. Uh, Passing it around. <laughs> Is there any training material that you already prepared that can be shared by the university and uh, used inside the course to prepare a common basis to afford these uh, projects? So we usually provide the like contributor guide for OpenStack or for Kata as like a first step and alongside the we we provide that alongside the project proposal so that they have like a baseline of the things that they're going to need to get set up um in addition to that though i can't think of anything off the top of my head uh steven has done a talk before uh, about um mentoring you wanna I, I was literally going to say there was a talk <laughs> on this in berlin last year that should be up on youtube uh I know that the Manila guys have done this as well. They like we usually in SDK and OpenStack client produce a document, a getting started guide that we give to the students. That will encourage them to go and give them directions on deploying DevStack, you know, setting up their laptops, the like a high level goal and then a more minute breakdown of what we're expecting from them in both work and kind of meetings and stuff. Um, again, that's that's mostly done by the mentors themselves as part of yep. the actual mentorship. I mean, we could move it up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we do it ourselves. Related to this, though, is there any, any way that you, uh, as a foundation, can uh, support, uh, let's say, a virtual environment that is already available and uh, ready to be used by the students? Because the difficulties that usually uh, we find is that uh, we spend lots of time uh, to arrive to a point that the, the system is running, yeah. no? At that point, the course is almost at the end, uh, and it's sometimes di difficult to, to yeah. start with the project. But yeah. if you don't do, don't do this, they don't understand uh, how OpenStack is structured and uh, how to manage it. Yeah. So sometimes it's uh, a bit difficult to, to do both things. Yeah, so we have like a variety of things that we've done related to that issue. So. We have gotten donations from some of our um, public cloud companies that are members of the foundation like Vexhost and Clura to donate resources to students and stuff like that. So we're able to make use of their OpenStack clouds. Um, so they're actually working with a production environment. This last time for Carnegie Mellon because the um, co-professor was in, uh, is a Microsoft uh, employee or a contractor, I'm not sure. Oh, I think he's an employee. He um, was able to get us some Microsoft Azure credits so that we could run on top of that. 
Um, the other thing that we have done to address this issue back when we did an upstream training before the summits called Upstream Institute, we maintained a VM image that had everything you needed for DevStack and the basic tools that you use um, so that we had everybody starting from the same point when we got into that training. Um, the only issue there is that they needed a laptop that could run VirtualBox and be able to use that image. But uh, some universities, like Oregon State University, they have their own lab. North Dakota State University also does and are able to donate resources. But we've, we've approached it a number of different ways. Stick. Oh, oh Siang Su, you have a question first. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, um, we have a, a developer cloud in Iceland, oh. which was donated, and we get free hosting and free energy in return for hosting open source project development. Woo! And we need to be it, friends, it does Stig. It does training courses, and it does um, a lot of our upstream development and testing activities. But we'd be very happy to, to host. Yes. The, the other piece of this yeah. <laughs> is that there is, um, uh, so that th there is also a summer project, which mm. we will be getting an intern of our own to do which will be to make a uh, sort of a multi-node open stack deployment as a like a click appliance in azimuth so very cool um, it should be interesting towards you know uh, the end of the summer that we may have this kind of resource awesome uh yeah we'll talk about that more i'll buy you a beer <laughs> always <laughs> siang su uh, yeah, um, and who and how do the university you mentioned learn that program of profession or project members? Because uh, or some of university involved in a very specific project, such as an OpenStack SDK, yeah. uh, then um, how do they learn that program? How d um, so usually I'm in contact with those universities, so like, Ildiko, for example, went to an event and she met a professor from UC Santa Clara. And she put me in contact with them and I'm talking to them and we'll hopefully have something set up. So it's a lot of really like organic connections with the professors, but I'm the one that like manages all of the university partnerships. And from there, I work with our community managers like Treva Williams from Kata Containers or Jeremy Stanley from Zool to get them um, to work with their communities to create the project proposals for these universities. So hopefully that answers the question. Yes? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. We got two more minutes. Yeah, so th this is less of a question and more of a comment. Sure. Uh, so you can, obviously we're doing this at the moment for universities, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll take Oregon State University. You said that they've got the lab environments and it's an intern that's working, doing sysadmin stuff. Yep. There's no reason that a similar model to this can't be used for companies that are you know, have a vested interest in OpenStack. Definitely. So we'll say if you have a load of people there, it's, it's different for you guys because you're something specific and you have people that be able to mentor. But if you mm -hmm. have, a, you know, mostly sysadmin guys that don't generally work upstream, but you have things that you actually want to get done, there'd be no reason that they couldn't reach out. Those companies couldn't reach out to you and say, well, we have Definitely. an intern that's willing to work on this. Can you give us something to work on? Give them something to work on. They learn loads, they get a mentor, they get paid by the company, the host company, this kind of stuff, so. Everybody profits. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's another yeah. model. Yeah. Good addition. Anybody else? One more minute for questions? Please come find me if you know of a professor I should talk to. I am friendly. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for coming. Uh, end of the day on the last day of the summit, I really appreciate your attention. So thank you. <laughs>